yes, I admit it. I'm a tactile junkie. What you're seeing is a culmination of me gathering a bunch of input devices for the purpose of tactile response. But today I want to talk about one specific device that probably is not been used very often with reason. And there's a big reason why. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's talk about using this tactile MIDI fighter controller with reason. Um, first off, um, I use Tornado um, quite a bit by Sugar Bites um, for doing like um, the little special effects that you always hear, the little DJ effects. Um, and I found it to be like the easiest um, plug-in to use for all those different types of effects. Um, we'll kind of cover this in, shortly. I want to show you the hardware setup of it first. Um, probably the reason why there are not a lot of people using it is because Reason doesn't natively come with the driver to support it. So you actually um, have to go dig one up. And also there's not one natively available through uh, DJ Tech Tools, the guys who actually developed the, the controller. Um, but um, luckily, um, I found a gentleman on GitHub called Unix Ninja, who actually was in the same mindset as me, needing that tactile functionality, who that decided to dig into the Lua Codex, the Lua Codex, sorry. <laughs> so the Lua Codex, Codex are, is the language that um, um, Reason is written in. Um, and what he did was he um, actually created a codec for the, mid, the DJ MIDI Fighter controller, and he created a map for it. Now, what he created doesn't contain all of the plugins that are available on the market and all of the plugins that are available within Reason. But as you know, um, as long as you have the actual driver installed, that you can remotely assign um, any control, um, any one of the control buttons on any controller um, to any button on the controller. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> There's a lot of control words in there. Um, so all we need to do is grab these, this Lua codec and this map, um, and I'll include the link in, the, in my show notes um, with this video. So first we're gonna, you're gonna need to download the, the codec files. There's like three of them. And I'm gonna show you this for the Mac version. And I'm, I'll have to include in the show notes the path location for Windows, where to place it in Windows. But um, since I'm like a, a pure Mac user, I uh, don't have Windows, so um, I won't be able to like show you a Windows side of it. Um, but we'll grab these three files. Um, it's the, actually he created a, um, this bitmap, which is just a kind of a bitmap of what the controller looks like. Um, the actual Lua file and the Lua codec. Okay, so we need those three files. And we're gonna go back out here and we're gonna grab this one map file. Okay, so once we have all those files downloaded, um, within the Mac OS environment, you're gonna need to open up, let's just do this. You're gonna go to the finder and just go to um, your hard drive and then go to library and let's straighten that out a little bit and within the library we're going to go to let me close all this up here we're going to locate application support and within application support we're going to find the Propellerhead software, and 
there are two spots within the propeller head software folder that you're going to need to place these files and warning you actually need to create folders for for these files to sit in they can't just sit out in the general directory so your files actually need to look just like this so i created a folder called djtt and then i copied the first three files um, into the section that says Lua Codex, Codex, and there's the three files and there's the one folder. So this is what it looks like when it's closed. Um, and again, it's just these three files. It's the LUA file, the LUA Codex, and the PNG file that need to go off in there. So then we're going to close that folder up. And then the next area that you're going to have to create another folder called DJTT and you're going to copy that map file. It's called the dot remote map file and you just copy it to that directory and again this is what it looks like when it's closed and again make sure that you're not copying it out into the general directory otherwise it won't be recognized by reason. Okay so now that we have that out of the way I'm going to close out of this and again I'll have I'll include this link in the show notes and he actually includes some really good instructions in here as well in the readme area or in the readme file it get oh okay here's the great he includes the windows file pad so in windows it's program data and then pro, uh, propeller head software and remote so you'll find those same folders um, that i just mentioned um, um, in the remote section of windows so that's one piece that we need that's the actual driver piece so let, now that we have the driver um, we're going to need another piece, which is actually a piece of software that actually pushes um, firmware updates to the controller. And it also allows you to be able to change MIDI data on the controller too. So um, you're going to need to go to the DJ Tech Tools um, store. And it's actually djtechtools.com. Um, once you get there, just go to the shop. You're going to um, scroll over here under DJ controllers and click on MIDI Fighter Twister. And again, this is a fantastic device. Um, it has like these three buttons on the side that allow you to program um, like banks, banks of four. So you can do bank, uh, bank switching. So you can have like a multitude of control functionality with this device. That's why I really like it. Um, there's also another companion device available um, that's more of a button kind of. Um, it's called the MIDI, MIDI Fighter 3D, and it's more of a button kind of pushing kind of deal. Um, that wasn't what I was like looking for. This twister actually has two separate functions. It's, it functions. It not only has the knobs that twist, but the, the knobs actually push. They act like push buttons as well. So it's, it's like a dual purpose device, which is why I, I was attracted to it because of the dual functionality. Okay, so anyway, um, let's keep going. Um, once we get back here and we get to the, to the, uh, um, the, the, the for sale or the, I'm sorry, <laughs> let's just start over. So once we get back to the DDH Tech Tools uh, shop for the Mini Fighter Twister, let's go back here. We see the nice pretty device. We're going to scroll all the way down here and we're going to go to support. Okay, so once you're in the support area, here's what you actually need. For a Mac, you need to download the um, MIDI Fighter Utility and for Windows as well. There's one available for Windows. So this utility actually allows you to be able to push uh, MIDI commands to um, the device and I'm going to show you what it looks like when you have it installed. Okay, so this is the MIDI Fighter Utility. Okay, so the MIDI Fighter Utility allows you to be able to control uh, quite a bit with the device. So you can change colors of the radio dials. You can change the actual um, um, indicator, color indicator, um, showing what position the, the actual uh, device is in, if it's on or off, the switch is on or off, uh, which is really cool. So the way that I have mine set up is all of my black. I, I also ended up buying like um, separate color 
um, color wheels for mine because they have like a, a um, they offer um, like these multitude of colors that you can purchase on the DJ Tech Tool Store for the different knobs. So the the ones at the top, I don't have them assigned to anything. They're just kind of free free form right now. But this bank, the second bank, I actually use for uh, with my glitch utility, which is a plugin that's available in the the uh, propeller head shop, and I'll show you that shortly. Um, but I have uh, that dedicated to this bank, and then this last bank, this last uh, bank of eight, is um, dedicated completely to Tornado. So um, all of my Tornado controls are uh, mapped directly to these to these. Uh, radio dials um, so that I can um, actually control Tornado from uh, the uh, MIDI fighter. Um, now there was something, there was one little special thing that I actually ended up having to do when I programmed the remote mapping for my glitch utility. Um, these two buttons right here actually do something a little different. They actually foggle, foggle and foggle meaning they have the ability to, to um, to go into on and off position um, by pushing them, like clicking them. Um, so like meaning permanently being in an on or off state. And I use that for like tape stop. Um, and I use it for stutter effect. Um, so it's really good for that. So it allows me to be able to, be able to control those types of uh, effects more tactilely. Um, and those two buttons are the uh, probably the only buttons I really did that change to. Oh, wait a minute. I did change this one to toggle as well. And there was something special I, I ended up having to do specifically uh, for reason to be able to get that to work. Um, and we'll take a look at that shortly. So um, this is the utility that you'll need to down, uh, download and install for being able to push. Uh, updates and again uh, MIDI information to the device. So now let's go back to Reason. Okay, so how does all this work? You want to know in Reason. So the master section. My master section is dedicated not only to um, some of my standard plugins that I use for overall sound quality. Um, I wasn't real happy with the stock apps that came with Reason, and I just never really have been happy with them. Um, uh, I just, I never could get the quality of sound that I liked, um, that I was previously getting in Pro Tools. Um, but once I was able to do this VST thing, oh, it was a life-changing event for me with Reason. So I was really excited. So now I'm able to use um, the tried and true S1 um, stereo with Waves plugin. Um, the L3 maximizer, which is a oh, it's a wonderful thing for like cranking up the volume, uh, your volume headroom without maxing out your uh, the loudness. And then uh, I'm just in love with the UAD Teletronics. Um, sometimes I will take that Teletronics out of there. Um, it's almost like a um, <laughs> kind of conflicting uh, with the Ultra max Maximizer. So I'll trade it out normally for, um, here, I'll just show you what I'll trade it out for under my UAD plugins. So I'll normally trade it out for this new um, plugin that I just got recently. It's the UAD Fairchild 7670, and it gives me like a really warm sound um, with it. Um, okay, so... Um, that's pretty much it on the, the master section, what's in there. So let's talk about setting up the MIDI Fighter Twister inside of Reason. So from the Reason pull down menu, you just need to open up Preferences. Um, and then from Preferences, normally it opens up this screen first. You just click on Control Surfaces. Um, and then you're going to just add and then you click on the pull down menu and then you'll see a new device in there called DJTT. So that's that new device that we just added. Um, so I actually already have one in there. Um, and then um, you'll see the um, 
the MIDI part of it as well in there if you click on the port in. Um, so once you do that um, and you have the device actually connected to, to your computer, um, it should light up without any issues. Um, so now that you actually have the driver installed and ready to go, now you can start remotely assigning buttons to it. So if you go back into your master's, oh, I, this is where I keep mine because uh, it's an overall sound quality um, effect. Um, you go back into the master section. I'm going to open up Tornado. And then, again, all of my bottom knobs are assigned to um, the Tornado um, plug-in. So, see, I'm actually touching the bottom knobs right now. So <clears throat> any effect that I want to select in here. And I don't normally keep like specific ones in here. I normally end up like trading out um, depending on what I'm wanting to use, um, like the stutter or if I want to trade out um, using the slicer. Um, it just really depends. But um, in order to get these working um, with Tornado, you have to click on the remote button and then you click on edit remote override mapping and it's because I actually have a mapping already in place so it, it tells you to like uh, touch what you're trying to assign to and just click OK. Um, so when you do that it'll automatically assign it to that device. So now <clears throat> when you um, select it, it'll automatically um, assign it. So there's not a lot of programming or anything like that involved. And most plugins, um, the VSTs work this way. Um, whereas uh, I'll show you um, the propeller head uh, based devices work a little bit different. They work uh, more in line with um, the remote, um, uh, the remote assign within Reason. And the remote assign is normally done by going to the options um, pull down menu and then selecting the remote edit mode. And when you do that, it puts the whole Reason device in or Reason software into this remote uh, state. Um, and then you just click on um, the function or feature that you want to assign and then uh, touch the knob, or uh, in this case, I have my two buttons assigned um, to turn the glitch on and off. When you do that, um, you'll see like this little spinning um, thunderbolt. Um, that means that it's actually uh, um, not assigned, but when it goes static like, like it is right now, it means it's actually assigned. So um, we'll go ahead and take it out of that remote mode. Um, so this is what it looks like when, when you push the buttons. So now you have more tactile control over those two features. So that's how I use those and how I set them up within Reason. Um, if you have any questions, please leave uh, those questions in the comment section and I'll uh, answer back as quickly as I can. Um, thanks for watching!